Namaste, everyone. We're going to do something a little bit different today. Uh, we It's six months since the earthquake in Turkey and northwest Syria. We're just going to give an update about the situation in northwest Syria. So um, in the last video that I did about the earthquake, we talked about Aya the earthquake miracle baby, where her mother gave birth under the rubble and then was crushed. And she was pulled out alive and they had to cut the umbilical cord. So they called her Aya Miracle. Well, her name is now, her real name now is Afra, uh, which is the name of her mother. And she has been adopted by her aunt and uncle and She's actually a very happy baby. So that's that's a happy story, a story of love and resilience, but it's by no means all good news. It's been six months and the news cycle has moved on and so many things are happening and now we're worried about the situation in Sudan and the coup in Niger the Canadian wildfires, there are many things we're worried about right now, but things have not improved for the majority of people in Northwest Syria. We spoke before about how it had been so difficult for them to get help, to get support because of their situation. Um, being an enclave of people who had fled from the brutality and torture of the Assad regime. For instance, uh, we have a dear friend, a young man who lives in Syria. He has a sister, has his parents, the rest of his family. In the earthquake, he lost his uncle, aunt and cousins and home. So he and his little sister, his parents who are older, they are now living in a tent along with many, many thousands of others who are residing in tents and containers, not proper tents. They're living in tents and we have this climate change situation which has been exceptionally bad in the Middle East. They are enduring really dangerous heat in tents. The little children who are so vulnerable to heat stress, the elderly, the sick, they're living in situations. My friend said, this tent in the heat is not habitable. I'm sure you've all had a little bit of an experience of being in a hot tent. Now imagine it's much hotter, hotter than it's ever been here unless you live in Arizona. It's really, really hot in Syria. They're living in tents. There's a lack of provision of medical care also because Russia has bombed hospital after hospital, clinic after clinic and killed doctor after doctor. So with the combination of war and the earthquake, it's a very serious situation, as our friend explained to us. Uh, none of us would want to be in their position. So we still need to help. We still need to draw attention. We still need to speak out. And we still need to donate to the charities we need to donate to the white helmets who are still clearing rubble from the earthquake as well as clearing rubble from ongoing bombing we need to donate to sams the syrian and medical american medical society who are doing their best to provide the medical care to the people living in the camps and the people who are surviving the 
earthquake and we can also donate to Islamic Relief, which is trying to provide for basic needs for the people in Syria. So speak up, make it known. Don't forget about the Syrian people. They are very resilient, but there are limits to what any of us can endure. Speak up. And also, fork out, <laughs> donate, give something, even a little. I'll put links so you can donate to the charities that help our friends in Syria who have suffered so greatly because of their strong desire to have what we take for granted liberal democracy, freedom, and they still don't have it. And they've lost a lot on the way. Thanks everyone, and we'll see you next week.